It's time for Friday Follies, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Hi, I'm Jackie Salaji, the head of operations at FN, and you're listening to A Midsummer's Quarantine. This production was made in under a month, without crunch time, by the staff at Faustian Nonsense. We believe that great art doesn't have to come at the sacrifice of great artists. If you like the show and what we do, consider supporting us on Patreon. Otherwise, follow us on Twitter and help us spread the joy of well-made art. Thanks for listening. Handbasketers, handbasketeers. Hand do you, do you folks have a name for yourselves? So, Helena's being Helena, thinking of everyone else before herself, including you, her fans. The fact that she's recording again. I tried to get her to take a day off, but no. Maybe you guys know Lysander better. Maybe she talks about him on the show more. I don't I don't know why she would, but well, I'm kind of grasping at straws here. Is this normal for him? Helena definitely mentioned that he was a disaster, but this level of flirting is well, it's uncomfortable. I certainly had some uncomfortable revelations. And don't get me wrong, he's still flirting with everyone. Sort of. That seems to just be how he talks. It, but but it feels like his heart's only in it with Helena. It's really weird. At least when they first showed up, he seemed to be so enamored with Hermia. Now he seems to think of her and me, but that's less important, as a pretty distraction from his sun, moon, and stars. Which, seriously is an actual thing he called Helena. Hell's not editing these either, by the way. Just uploading without listening. She said she hasn't had the energy, and frankly, I don't blame her. I offered to help, but you guys know hell. That was a lost cause as soon as I had the idea. Therefore, I decided to be proactive. It just so happens that the beehives on the roof needed to be drained urgently, and I was unable to do it because of a term paper deadline that had moved. And as all you know, Helena can be tricked out of stressing out over work if she thinks she can protect someone else from their woes. So, she's taking care of that, which hopefully is a good distraction. And, to make sure she doesn't have to make up time for lost content, I've taken the mic and retreated to my corner of the room to get away from the weirdness that is Lysander and Hermia. Helena usually treats these things as a, like a confessional or a diary, right? I, I can do that, I think. I, I definitely don't have any big secrets, though. So. <laughs> That's what reality shows are all about, right? Dramatic stuff like secretly being in love for years. In years, and never knowing how to say anything about it that does the feeling justice without compromising a friendship that you truly value and hold dear to your heart. Or, or something like that. I, I wouldn't know. Um, I guess... Uh, oh, oh, hey, how about this? Hermie is trying to get us all to do yoga every morning. And I mean, I'm not opposed to that. 
You all know I've been getting pretty into the kettlebell myself recently. But it feels like she's trying to bring her influencing into our routine. Mine and Helena's and... Huh? Demetrius. Uh, L L Lysander? It seems someone is at the apartment door. Can't you get it? Oh, I would. But it seemed to upset my beloved Helena when I answered the door last time. And I would rather walk across hot coals than cause her any distress. Okay, I got it. Whoever's at the door has got to be more fun than this mess. Hey, just me. <laughs> Here's your honey. It wasn't nearly as full as you were worried, though. Uh, the bees are becoming really friendly. I didn't even need the helmet. <laughs> I told you. Patience pays off, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, is that the mic? Yeah. I, I thought... I I thought I'd make sure you didn't have to stay up late, giving extra hours of material or something. Oh, wow. Wow. Dini, thank you. That's so... Helena, are you back? I need your face. Mm, yeah, that sounds about right. Do you mind holding on to the mic for a little longer? Yeah, sure. Oh, and I let your uh, drizzly delivery guy into the building. D no problem. And thank you. Wait, not, not thank you. I, I didn't order... Demetrius. <laughs> right? Oh, oh my God, don't do that. You're, you're the drizzly guy? But I didn't order any... Uh, hold on, how do you know my name? I come bearing booze. About last time I was here, I want to make it up to you. You were here before? You're my favorite, you know. I, I am? Your, your favorite what? You've always been my favorite. And I wanted to make it up to you. Make, make, make what up to me? I, I'm sorry, who are you? I'm a basket case. Oh. Oh! Hell no, no, hint. Got it. Basket case. Wait, wh what are you making up to me? I've been listening. Uh, I mean, it's not like it's your fault. Nothing is ever my fault. What? Yeah, that's... What I said. Anyway, I brought this for you. Oatmeal stout, right? Your favorite. How did you... I listened to the show! I haven't really talked about my alcohol preferences on air, have I? Of course. Why wouldn't you? So this is for you on me. You brought me free booze? Free as a bird. Um... Give it to me. Anything for my favorite. Ah, thanks, man. I owe you one. Enjoy. Demi, settle something for us? <laughs> oh, oh, hey, 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 Hermia. Hey, uh, um, hey. <laughs> you, you, you look incredible. When did you... No wonder you're an inspiration. It is not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think I am not in the night. Nor doth this quarantine lack worlds of company. For you, in my respect, are all the world. Then how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? Pause. On... Believable. This is a lot of things, but unexpected is not one of them. Why do you keep letting him help? Help. Hey! I really did help this time. You wanted me to whammy Demetrius? I whammy Demetrius. You were supposed to make him fall in love with Helena! Isn't he already in love with Helena? Stop pretending you don't know what I mean. You were supposed to help them get together. I don't recall you specifying that. You of all people should know that the Fae follow the letter of the request, not the spirit. Aren't you our king, technically? You have not followed the letter of my request. I said I wanted Helena to be happy. She's been upset all day. 
you requested that Demetrius got a love potion. You hoped that Demetrius getting a love potion would make Helena happy. I'm not responsible for the fact that it made her miserable. She has been miserable, which has been a lot of food. A lot of bad food. Oh, come on. This might be good. This is exactly what Helena wanted. Demetrius is in love with Hermia. This should be making her happy. But it's not. Right now, she's probably holed up in her room, wondering why that is. The drama, the heartache, the realizations on the horizon. Mm, it's immaculate. It's straight out of Friends. Friends is a bad show! I'm not spending this whole quarantine feeding off of Friends. Nobody likes a picky eater. You... Stop that! You're mad at Puck, too. What? No, she's not. No, I am. All right, worth a shot. I'm mad at Puck for being a little shit. But come on, how old are you complaining about your food? I see. Yesterday I'm too old, and now I'm a baby. You said it, not me. All I'm saying is that you've been around for millennia. Surely you can afford to expand your palate a little. I've already tried everything I needed to try. My palate is fine. Look, I'll fix it, okay? You just need to be specific with what you want, and I'll get it done. I want- Oh, hold on. We're not even at the end of the episode yet. What, do you think this is going to resolve itself in the next 26 minutes? I think that mortals are delicate, and their emotions are complicated, and you should gather all the information before you send Puck hammering about like the blunt instrument he is. <sighs> Fine, but this conversation is not over. Of course not! Why would either of you ever let a conversation end? Play. Ah. Uh. Sure, I, I can settle something for you. I'm sure such brilliant ladies such as yourselves must be right about whatever it is. Uh, you can't just say that. I need you to look. Come here. Hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you did my heart fly to your service. Lysander, scooch. I need Demetrius to see too. Oh my, it's so crowded in here. Uh, my apologies, sweet Helena. But we all must gaze upon your loveliness. Well, of course she looks good. She's Helena, and I'm me. Her immaculate bone structure and my artistic genius is an unstoppable combo. What am I settling? Whether this is the right makeup for me. So, Demetrius, this is a test set from my newest sponsor. And... Helly here doesn't see her own gorgeousness. Helena, if I could write the beauty of your eyes, and in fresh numbers number all your graces, the age to come would say, This poet lies, such heavenly touches, ne'er touched earthly faces. You always, you always say that. I mean, well, not that, like, exactly, but, um... Do I? I can't recall. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying I look bad. I just... Don't think this is my color. That's because we need to change your hair. What? Oh, Demetrius, don't you agree? She needs more color. Oh, I have ideas. I would trust your eyes to choose a new color to repaint the skies, Hermia. Picking hair dye must be trivial for you. No, I like my hair as it is. Aw, come on, Hell. I need to try something new. My followers want to see my work on other people. I told you, you can do my makeup. And I want to do more. Is there anything I can help with? If I could be assistance to any of you three, I would count it as the highest honor of my life. My bounty is boundless as to see. My love is deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have for both our infants. Yes! Oh, Demetrius, bad idea. 
Why is that? Oh, you would look so good with their green... Hermia, Demetrius does not want green lipstick. Um, it is like a really tasteful shade. Demi, save yourself! You wish for me to model for you? O-M-G. Demi, it is only a slight exaggeration to say that my entire career as an influencer depends on it. I can't pretend to understand why you choose me over the radiance of Helena and the tidal wave of passion that carries Lysander, but I will quiet myself before I talk you out of it. I could not be more pleased to be your knight in shiny heart. Green lipstick. Shining green lipstick. Demetrius, are you trying to impress me? I'll never tell. Love sought is good, but giving unsought is better. <laughs> what a poet you are. Be careful, there is really ever only enough room for one lover boy, and I do hope I'm right in saying I have that space Ugh. occupied. I mean, this is good. Demetrius and Hermia, this is this is good, right? Right, Helena. I, Demetrius, are you sure? I mean, it's great that you want to help Hermia. Are you worried about me? Touched as I am, my lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready to- Oh, stand. Helena! My love, you care so much about everyone. That's true beauty, you know. Herms, it's going to be tough fitting that in a makeup kit. Oh, is that what you're doing? I can play that game. Demetrius, it's true, you know. Those eyelashes of yours are just irresistible. Lysander wishes he had eyelashes like that. He tells me so literally every week. And your bone structure... I think it's great that you two are getting to know each other <laughs> and each other's um, eyelashes. Right, Lysander? Aren't they cute? Anything you say, my sweet. Oh, stop that! Stop what? My sweet. What would you prefer? Schnookerpuss? That's worse. My baked Alaska flambe. You know what? Sure. Um, you know what? I am always all about the love, but I think I need some space if I'm going to create my masterpiece. Are you kicking us out? Hermia, you know I'm not trying to. Ah, I think I'm distracting the model. No, no one, one is distracted, is Sandy. distracted, Sandy. That you are. Come, my perfectly light meringue. Let us leave this place and gaze into one another's souls in the living room. That sounds horrible. I don't want to do that. <laughs> light meringue. Lysander, you're, uh, really creative. But are you so much in love as your rhymes speak? Neither rhyme nor reason can express how much. Oh, look at Demetrius. What a poet. I think you've been ousted, Sandy. Get out. Hermia, are you okay? I'm living my truth and creating my bliss. And I'm trying to concentrate here, so I don't need to listen to my boyfriend continually ignore me for my BFF. How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast. Belike for want of rain, which I could well beteem them from the tempest of my eyes. Ay, me, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history. The course of true love never did run but smooth. But with you, Demetrius, we could have a real love story. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Hmm. Uh, beautiful. But they cannot hold a candle to you, Helena. Come, my lovely tiramisu. <sighs> Demetrius, Henry the mic. Stay gentle, Helena. Hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul. Fair Helena. <sighs> Listeners, I'm, I'm going to stop recording. I don't want spoilers for Hermia's upcoming makeup posts. <laughs> that's that's definitely the only reason. Until then, um, thanks for listening, and stay safe, everyone.
Wow, all these makeup posts look amazing. I had no idea everyone involved in this drama was so hot. That green lipstick is a bold choice for Demetrius, but I think it works. I assume Helena's a bit colorful for your tastes? Yeah, she's very pop princess. But it's clearly high quality stuff. What's the sponsor's name again? <laughs> Let me check. Look at my sourdough! Look at it! That's... bread? What exactly are we supposed to be seeing here? It's flat! It barely rose! I mean, it's a little flat, I guess. It's practically matzah, and it's all your fault. <laughs> My fault? For the past three months, I have had a stable set of emotions to feed into this bread. And then you go and drug two of the people in the apartment, and now there's all this jealousy and embarrassment and bitterness in the mix. And I have to completely adjust my recipe. God forbid your bread tastes like something, huh? I was talking to Puck. Can't I talk to Puck? I don't know. Helena and her basket of attractive 20-somethings are Titania's source of food, too. Shouldn't she have a say? Thank you, Puck. I, for one, am enjoying having some actual flavor in my life. You're not even eating the bread. Why would I? It's flat. Just, I... You know what your problem is, dear? The bread is the only thing you seem to want to make. Look at all the ingredients we're getting from them. There's finally spice. You could make some arbiata or a gumbo, curry. You have options. And you still want to make the same goddamn bread. The bread is good. The bread works. Or it did until Puck started messing it. <laughs> good. All your time on Earth, Oberon, and you're just chasing after good. I'd rather good than the mess we're in now. The mess is great. This is awesome, Ron. <laughs> Months of awkward flirting is fine, but this... This is metal. I feel like I've just gone from McDonald's to Michelin star. Just because you have no appreciation for simple things doesn't mean none of us do, Tiddy. I think that you're just upset that with four mortals, you can't make enough mediocre sourdough to soak up all the energy and starve me out. Ah, yes. Our two new additions to the cast continue to delight. Titania, you must like having someone familiar around. Can't say I know what you mean. Oh, don't play innocent. Thank you, Puck. How can I have forgotten? Checked in with Cobweb lately, my love? We may have chatted. Oh, did he tell you anything interesting? Are you jealous, darling? I thought you only felt threatened by C-list ASM artists. I am not jealous. I'm just... I, I'm concerned about the wager, I assume. Did you two ever decide who won? Well, me, obviously. Absolutely not. Lysander's been there for days, and he's certainly not leaving his... What was it? His perfectly light meringue? Behind. You know, I could have done that imitation. If it weren't for Puck's interference, he'd be gone by now. We didn't say Puck couldn't interfere. In fact, we both agreed that Puck should interfere. Of course! I would never mess with the mortals without your explicit permission. This is not the interference we agreed upon. Oberon? If you're admitting defeat... That is not what I'm doing! Puck, you said you'd fix this. I await your orders, my good king. Get things back to normal. Unenchant Demetrius, for starters. That should get Helena's emotions back in check. Easily done. Provided I have permission from my lady as well. Titania! Oh, take the stick out of your ass. Puck has my permission to do whatever you want him to do. 
Really? Of course. I am but your obedient wife. <laughs> am I not? I remember the last time you called yourself that. <laughs> <laughs> it was right after you set my Freddie Mercury signed <laughs> Queen album on fire. <laughs> well, you're not really embodying the spirit of Queen right now, so I might be on her side about that, actually. What's going to happen when Puck lifts his enchantment? Lysander and Hermia will still be in the house. Helena will keep trying to set up Hermia and Demetrius. If it works, Helena will eventually be forced to face her feelings. If it doesn't work, Demetrius will still be constantly confronted with the fact that Helena doesn't love him, or doesn't know it at least, and Hermia will have to put up with her relationship getting trashed. The thing about mortals, about people, is that they change whether you want them to or not, Oberon. Meddling or none, that apartment is, well, going to hell in a handbasket. Well, you heard her, Puck. I did! She said a lot of cool stuff about the inevitability of change. No, I mean you heard the part about her being okay with you messing around. Oh, yeah, that was like two minutes ago, though. Don't you want to talk about the inevitability of change stuff? No, I want to get another loaf started because this one is flat and bad. Have fun. You know what, Titania? I want to change the terms of this bet. Oh? Starchild can go wherever he wants. When I win, you're coming off of your stupid no-carb diet and you're eating all all my bread. Is that a euphemism for something? Why do you care whether I have carbs in my diet? Because the bread is good. It's good as it is when it's stable without weird manufactured drama. And I am going to prove that to you. You are going to sit down and enjoy some nice, normal bread, whether you want to or not. I mean, if she's enjoying it, she'll probably want to. Fine. I'm going to win, so this is a moot point anyway. Good. Good. Fine. Fine. You left the oven on, didn't you? No, shut up! This program was brought to you by a network of dedicated artists with creative souls just like just like yours. 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 yours Faustian yours, Nonsense yours, thanks yours, you for yours, more patronage. Yeah. Just like yours. And now, Mutual of Ohm, providing spiritual insurance for your past, your present, and your future since 500 BC, proudly presents Wrinkly's Believe It or Forget About It, bringing you strange but true tales and oddities from all over this wide world. And here is your host, Mr. Robert Wrinkly. Hello, I'm Robert Wrinkly. And lastly, here is the story of Johnny Warden of Halifax, Nova Scotia, who, as second mate of the cargo ship SS Mont Blanc, miraculously survived the explosion of that vessel on December 6th, 1917, and the subsequent destruction of the Richmond district of Halifax, and the deaths of more than 2,000 Haligonians, by the simple miracle of having been in the bed of a prostitute in neighboring Fort Sackville at the time. He was known as Lucky Jack for the rest of his life. He died in 1947 in Queens, New York, at the age of 62. Interestingly enough, in the bed of another prostitute. Believe it or oh, forget about it. I'm Robert Wrinkley. Ta-ta for now. You've been listening to a special feature of Pulp Puri Theater. Wrinkley's Believe It or Forget About It. Brought to you by Mutual of Ohm. Providing spiritual insurance for your past, your present, and your future since 500 BC. This is Gramercy Noun speaking. We return you now to our regularly scheduled program.